Welcome to the Berlin Film Festival where strict Covid rules mean we have to be tested every 24 hours to get into any event. And you have to order assigned seats online, which led to this guy jumping up on stage before one film and ranting like this. Seating is not okay! <laughs> You're right. I'm and so it went on before the gentleman left the stage with the audience indicating a failure on his part to read the room where there was for the most part approval of the festival's covid measures ticketed seating does abolish your freedom to choose yes but it also abolishes queuing this year's festival began with Francois Ozon's Peter von Kant, which is a gender-flipped, or partly gender-flipped, version of Rainer Werner Fassbinder's 1972 film The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant, about a female fashion designer calling for a younger woman who breaks her heart. Now it's a male movie director, evidently a more rumbustious and camper version of Fassbinder himself, falling for a young wannabe actor. Mm. I'm me, Peter von Kant. Mon meilleur ami, dont j'ai fait le premier film il y a... Bonjour, monsieur. Appelez-moi Peter. Mm. Je vous en prie, asseyez-vous. Euh, excusez le désordre. Oh, ça ne me gêne pas. Café, thé, cognac Cognac, volontiers. Karl Cognac, toi aussi, Sido Non, je venais le matin. C'est drôle. Je vous imaginais plus âgé. Pourquoi plus âgé Quand on a autant de succès et qu'on est célèbre. D'habitude, les gens sont plus âgés. Je suis l'exception qui confirme la règle. <laughs> Prost. Prost. Ozo has removed the bitter tears from the title and the movie itself, where the first film was claustrophobic, airless and crazed. This film, for all its histrionics, is somehow lighter in tone, and it has something to do not precisely with making it male, but making it mixed. The main characters have been gender switched, but there are women too, which ventilates the whole thing. Denis Minochet is very good as Peter, but this rather theatrical Coardian oddity is slightly lacking in substance and weight. Now on to the British director who can always be relied on to bring the weird and get the quirk on stream. It's Peter Strickland, who after his debut, the relatively conventional European realist drama Catalin Varga, switched to the highly stylized, sexily self-aware genre pastiche black comedies or quasi-comedies like Bavarian Sound Studio, The Duke of Burgundy and In Fabric. His latest is Flux Gourmet, set in a research centre for sonic cooking, a home for creative collectives who are interested in exploring the well-known connection between food and electronic sound. The best collectives here stretch the elastic of their culinary sounds as far as they could. My duty is to support and nurture their vision. What made you want to be in a culinary collective? Sound always excited me. Silence from an audience was always my fear. And anything I could do to break that silence became more important than anything else. The hint of Peter Greenaway there is intriguing or heart-sinking according to your taste. It's very silly and strange, unearthly and wildly self-indulgent all at once. It's never boring exactly, although it often veers into its own somnambulist trance. The sonic cooking idea collapses into near negligible nothingness, like candy floss when you bite into it. There is so little actual content, so little actual material that the style is more important than ever. It's an oddity, and I worry that Strickland is disappearing, as it were, up his own cul-de-sac, but he has a real filmmaking language. Here's one of my favourites in Berlin, the very zany fantasy comedy, incredible but true, by the capering mischief-maker of French cinema, Quentin Dupieux. Je sais pas trop comment présenter le, le sujet, en fait, tu sais, toi. Non, 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 moi ça m'angoisse, vas-y, toi. Bon, on a une raison d'être inquiet. Ça, on n'est pas là pour rien. Mais... C'est pas évident d'en de, de, euh, parler comme ça, quoi. Euh, en fait, on, on, a, on a peur que vous nous preniez pour des fous, quoi, si, si on vous raconte l'histoire. C'est ça. Je tente, quand même. Je me lance. 
The sheer silliness and zen pointlessness of this film is very enjoyable. Anna Chabat and Lea Drucker play Alain and Marie, who are house hunting in the suburbs. Their estate agent shows them a rundown but spacious house which has a very unusual metaphysical feature, a hatch in the basement floor which can be opened to gain access to a tunnel that leads directly down into the upstairs bedroom. You wind up higher than you were before and this duct has other extraordinary features. Meanwhile, their neighbour, played by Benoit Majumon, has had an electronic penis installed using experimental Japanese surgery and things aren't going well. You might find this film irresistible or insufferable. I like it a lot and even I'm a bit undecided. It is a little exasperating that Dupieux doesn't explore the possibilities and implications of his premise the way Harold Ramis does in Groundhog Day. He doesn't, he just bops along from one daft joke to the next. But it's funny, it's alright with me. Thanks very much, more later.